I'm Dr. Kamal Pahasram. I'm an ENT senior ENT consultant at Leelawati Hospital. Today, I will just give you a brief idea about a symptom which we come across commonly in our ENT department, that is hoarseness of voice. Other word for it is any abnormality of a normal voice. Before we proceed with on hoarseness of voice, normal voice normally is, it projects a human being's personality. It makes it more interesting to the listener and a voice print or a voice is permanent. When there is any change of voice, then we look into multiple reasons. And when you talk about a voice, you think of three basic areas. The voice is produced by the vocal cord, a single membrane situated in the larynx and it gets help from the, the lungs, the abdominal muscles and the thoracic muscles to produce the voice and the lips, the cheeks and the tongue take part in the articulation process to make it more understandable and more interesting. So when we talk about abnormality of voice, it is becomes hoarseness of voice. Now when we look at a patient having little hoarseness of voice, you look to looking at the vocal cord or vocal fold and this needs a detailed examination. Prior to examining, we take a proper history in which we find out how long the patient had hoarseness of voice, what is the trigger which made it worse and any additional extrinsic factors which add it to the problems. An examination of vocal cord is not easy because it's something situated inside larynx and it needs some additional method so that you examine. First, you use a laryngoscope which allows you to examine the vocal cord and you see there are basically three types of problems. Either there can be a mass lesion, something situated on the vocal cord, a swelling or a nodule or any cyst or a polyp or there might be a movement disorder when the vocal cord undergoes weakness and then you see movement of the vocal cord is sluggish and you need to find out what caused that and the third of course is the tension disorder when the vocal cord does not elongate or shorten to normalcy and you get change of voice because of functional problem. So basically we divide them into mass lesion, movement disorder and tension disorder. Now doing all this, you need to do a laryngoscopy. A laryngoscopy is like a endoscopy examination of the vocal cord and all the structures around it. And when you see the vocal cord, if there is any finding, sometimes you miss that. So to additionally benefit you, you do an examination called as stroboscopy. A stroboscopy is a slow motion examination of a vocal fold so that any early lesion is picked up. So once you have an endoscopy picture, you might need to do imaging of the vocal cords. You might need to do additional tests to find out the lung function and any other palatal problem or tongue problem to come to a conclusion where the problem is originated from and what is contributing to the hoarseness of voice. Once you have an examination finding, it becomes easy to step go to the next step and find out what other modalities available for treatment. And normally the modalities available for treatment is either medical treatment or surgical treatment or rehabilitation called as speech therapy or voice therapy. Current, the concept is to set up a voice laboratory in which you have professionals who are ENT, a speech and language therapist and a vocal coach or a voice coach because a lot of patients who see us with hoarseness of voice are happen to be professional voice users who are singing or using their voice for professional use. So you have a voice lab in which you do an examination with professionals, you have an examination finding and you have a treatment modality in which beside the ENT you have additional help from a speech and language pathologist and a vocal coach or a singing coach. At the end of all this final you have to come to a treatment modality which is optimum will help the patient get better and quite often in this process you do land up with problems which becomes more difficult and dangerous that is a cancer or malignancy. So we started with saying that the simplest things are there but if you do have a problem of cancer or anything you need to process to the next step to have a finding with a biopsy. Coming now to the medical treatment is easy with some medical line of treatment with proper follow-ups you should be able to sort out the problem which is an acute laryngitis which is common, a vocal nodule which is because of excessive or badly using your voice and along with a speech and language pathologist you can manage to do this. However, if you have a, something looking dangerous or anything in the vocal cord you need to undergo a biopsy, a specimen is sent for histopathology 
and when you have a diagnosis which might need further line of treatment with uh, onco surgeon or you may need to treat accordingly and of course after the treatment is over there is a role of a speech and language pathologist who will help rehabilitate the vocal cord to the best of his ability to get a voice which is near normal along with this it covers up for treatment completely and the last of course thing is to have a process in which you prevent disease on the vocal cord so this also requires a lot of additional rehabilitation and therapy to so that you don't get a relapse or recurrence of the problem which we originally started from and of course because i'm emphasizing a lot of times you land up with a small lesion on the vocal cord which you send for a biopsy and it lands up at malignancy this becomes an important time and the earlier it is diagnosed the easier it gets to get better results why i'm saying this is because a vocal cord when you speak a little change of voice also needs attention should not be left alone and should be early diagnosis is important so that the treatment works and you don't miss out on something which would have failed in later time i would like to conclude by saying a symptom is so common symptom is presents early and it needs immediate evaluation of the vocal cord thank you